Welcome to this our little broadcast in honor and recognition of the annual Credit Union Week month actually. And we are the members of the St. Lucia Workers Credit Union. With me, I have the president, Mr. Peter Lewis, and a board director, Mr. Ariel Branford. Um, just for some history, the St. Lucia Workers Credit Union was first organized in 1982 by a group of persons who at the time worked with cable and wireless. They were looking for a way to get the maximum benefit, financial benef benefit for their workers. At this time, I just want to put in a little plug to recognize those persons who contributed and sometimes may go, you know, un uncelebrated. Persons like Norbert Wilson, um, Carl Emanuel, to name a few. And as we go through the program, we will name others. At this time, I just want to direct some questions. Well, not questions, but to invite Mr. Lewis, first of all, to speak about the credit union. The credit union this year is 36 years old. And of course, it's a journey. From what we know, the credit union started with, from a briefcase. Mm -hmm. And so those guys came together and they put their monies, uh, they took a chance and they got other persons to put in their money and to take a chance. So 63 persons from the organization where they worked put their money in mm -hmm. and they operated with a briefcase and a stamp, right? So 36 years later, you have come in. And so we would like you to sort of bring us up to uh, up to date. Up to date. The yes, because then they, they, at their first um financial statement they were worth 126 dollars yeah, okay uh, so you have to give <laughs> us the figures and tell us uh, well um, first of all let me let me express our deepest gratitude to to myself mr branford and even for you being here um at this period of um, credit union month 2019. um, um y while you were going through the whole history of the credit union I could not help but but recognize that though we're not operating in a briefcase anymore, we are all still putting into that briefcase. Um, to look at it and figure it was a hundred and something dollars then. If we go back, because we celebrated our 36th annual general meeting some months ago, and so it would mean that the organization is 37 years old. Um, to put that in context, we are still filling the briefcase, just that we don't have a physical briefcase anymore. We have bank accounts, and um, we now operate out of uh, what I like to, <laughs> and Mr. Branford knows, I see. We now operate on what is one of the most historical pieces of real estate in St. Lucia, just off from the Derek Walcott Square. Okay, you jump Bourbon in the gutter, Mr. Lewis. We want the journey from... No, 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 no. no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that. <laughs> but what happened is that these 63 persons, albeit they came together and they started the organization, and they were able to get people to recognize the value of pooling resources together for the benefit of everybody. And that is, in principle, is really what a credit union is. It is built on the precepts of cooperation, on democracy, one man, one vote, on the, the, the concept that we are going to manage our resources to the benefit of everyone. And so after this organization started to grow, undoubtedly it opened up to other entities and you, know, you had people from um, other organizations joining until the point where it actually went open. It opened its, its boundaries. And so now we have persons, once you're over 18 years of age and you are St. Lucian, you can become a member of St. Lucia Workers Credit Union. Um, we also have products where we have the next generation, we like to call them, which would be the children of members coming in to 
to become members in what we call the Young Dreamers account. So now our membership stands proudly at um, a little over 10,000 members. So 63 has become 10,000 and uh, uh, 100 and something dollars has become well over 60 million. So that's pretty much it in a, in a nutshell. Okay, so earlier on, I, I named a few of the, the stalwarts who started, and they, they were the first board of mm. the, the St. Lucia Workers' Credit Union. And at this time, I just want to call out Timothy Augustine, mm -hmm. Randolph, Randolph Quinlan, mm -hmm. Denison Paris, Carl Emanuel, Norbert Wilson, Thomas Ernest, George Louis, Joseph Sandiford, and Fred Walcott. And at this time, we want to say thank you to those individuals Indeed. who had the foresight to actually set about to establish the St. Lucia Workers Credit Union from $126 <laughs> to <laughs> Mr. President. 60 plus million. Great. Yes. So, as a board member, from a governance standpoint, can you tell the viewers what it is, the, the vision of, the, of this board, what the board has been able to set about to do, to take what has had to be done to take us from first of all we were in conway mm -hmm. then grass street yes. and now like you say prized real estate on on the on derrick walcott square of but day. of course you didn't just get up one day <laughs> and were at derrick walcott square no, right no. so you know just to give us an understanding of the, the the dream and how we came from conway to derrick walcott square okay um, um Again, you know, I, I, I say this and I, I, I'm humbled to speak of this because um, like I've said to other directors and, and Mr. Branford is here with me to attest the fact that um, it, we grow from strength to strength because young people are coming in to develop the organization. And I came in um, just as young as Mr. Branford initially and um, I've been tutored in the, in the business of credit unions. And um, what has happened is that with the growth of the organization, you needed a secretariat. So the organization moved to the Union Hall based at Conway. That building still stands and is in the center of that CDC complex. So we had an office there. The organization, again, more members, more need for services, a need for loans officer, need for a manager, need for, for um, services to, to deal with members and their, their transactions you needed a bigger place. Um, we moved to, to Grass Street in the old Eudoxy's ice cream building. Mm -hmm. And um, and then that had to be enlarged. And um, and that space, we, we outgrew that space. But in between, we felt the need also to decentralize our, our, our business. And so we opened a branch at Gable Woods Mall. And that made it more accessible to other members who either worked in the North or were found the difficulty of getting to town to do transactions. For a long time, we operated transactions on a Saturday from that location, and that worked well. But then, albeit, like they say, with growth comes its challenges. And so we had to continue to pursue a, a directive to, to create a space which, which we can service all of the members, of course, have our staff in a location that is safe, and. Um, and accessible. And um, Grass Street proved a little difficult because the, you could appreciate that the city has changed quite a bit. Coral Street used to be a very busy street. It's not so busy anymore. And with changing and seeking to service the members, there's a need to get deeper into, into, into Grass Street. And the opportunity came to move towards the Bourbon Street location, which we now have. And um, we, we seized the opportunity with the permission of our members. Because remember, we were a member-driven organization. So it wasn't the board of directors deciding to do so. It was the members stating that we must pursue that action. And um, by the grace of God, we were able to deliver that to them. Um, not too long ago, just a little over a year yeah, ago, no, we right. were able to deliver that to them and formally cut the ribbon and have our ceremony to open the Bourbon Street branch. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Um, Ariel, I don't want you to feel left out. <laughs> uh, you representing the youth on our board and in the organization. I mean, the youth tend to feel left out. Uh -huh. But we needed Peter to set the foundation for where we're going. <laughs> and so now I come to you uh, because you're the youngest member of the board. 
-hmm. and you are the voice of the youth. Correct. So we just want to get your perspective because you know when people hear credit unions, especially the young people, they figure that's things for old people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we want to change that <coughs> mindset. There has to be a paradigm shift in the way people think mm -hmm. so that we can, because we need to bring in members mm -hmm. and we are growing organizations so we have things to offer and there are different demographics that we need to tap into mm -hmm. and the youth we have recognized is one of them. Right. So you, you are correct. The, um, it, 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 it's not very attractive to the youth when you mentioned the credit union. And um, even like you stated, me being one of the youngest board directors, um, something like that, and especially with the fact that this is a voluntary position, it's not very attractive to the youth. They would probably prefer some sort of compensation for something like that. However, there is compensation. There's a lot of compensation. It just doesn't come in the form of anything monetary. You get personal development, and that is one of the things that being a director has assisted me the most. Um, you get the guidance from, like you said, pe persons like Peter who set the foundation. Um, they would also let you, your, your views, you're not stifled. And that's, some of the, that's one of the things the young people need to understand. As much as we, we feel as if our voices are not heard, if you stay from the outside, they will never hear you. So you need to actually become members of these organizations, put yourself out there, and then you can be heard. Um, one of the things was the first year as a director, and Peter would tell me, no, it doesn't work like that, Iril. I would be very silent. I would say to Peter, because we go home after the meetings, that um, I listen to everything, Peter, and then I would see how I could. He said, no, the minute you become a director, um, you were voted in at the AGM, mm -hmm. so the, the membership decided that they want you to be a director. Your opinion matters, so don't feel anywhere. You could interject at any time and give us your input. We want your input. Now, that is also part of the youth problem. We tend to be a little bit shy, a little bit timid, and not open up. So you need to actually make yourself available to some of these things that are out there and put yourself out there so that you could actually be heard and be seen by people across the place. Right, and so even as you say that, we, when you say we have to put ourselves out there, the St. Lucia Workers Credit Union is actually trying to develop products and services that will attract the youth. And as part of Credit Union Month, we will be hosting a financial forum mm -hmm. at our offices on Bourbon Street on the, on the first floor where we will be teaching the young people about financial matters. Mm -hmm. That is on the October 4th, 14th, 14th sorry. That's for Monday, October Monday. 14th, right, mm -hmm. from 5 p.m. So we're inviting the youth to mm -hmm. come. It's, you don't have to pay. Um, you just come and you don't have to be a member. As a matter of fact, it's an opportunity to learn about the mm -hmm. credit union and that we would welcome you with open arms. So don't feel intimidated. Oh, I'm not a member. I'm not going to come. No, that's not what it is. We have recognized the, the, the necessity to reach out to our youth because the youth is the, the future of our nation. Correct. And we, can, we cannot mm -hmm. have an exclusive society, so we have making it all inclusive for the youth. So please come to that open forum on the 14th at 5 p.m. Correct. Okay? And I real, you know, even as the youth again, I'm, I'm plugging in, in, <laughs> into the youth because you have been to Carib DE. Correct. Tell our viewers what Carib DE is and how it has benefited you and how the youth who we're inviting to come, what they can look forward to. Okay. So going back on what I said previously in regards to the compensation, there, there lies one. Um, the credit union invested in me to actually partake in a development education program, educators, sorry. And it was new to me, and Carib D and everybody who's done it would know when you ask any questions, you only told trust the, the process. process. So I had no idea of what it was until I actually got there. Um, but I could tell you what it was. It was a university course in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what it was. You had your day started at 6 a.m. and probably ended at 8, 8 p.m., sorry. And even on your final days, you know you could go into the next morning. But what this program did, and even at the, the forum we had the last time, and I encouraged the um, directors that were present to send the youth, and not only the youth, but any person joining the credit union movement, it gives you 
the ex the, it gives you an insight, and I and I beg, I would ask somebody if you do Carib D, if it doesn't give you a zeal to continue the movement and join the movement, Something then you wrong. didn't then you didn't actually do Carib D. Indeed. So Carib D helped me understand that the credit union is a large family, and large as in when you find out that there's hundreds in the United States. They're all over Europe. It started in Germany. Then you start to wonder, wait a minute, this is not just a small island thing. And mm -hmm. maybe that's the sort of thing that discourages the youth as well. They don't know these things. Mm -hmm. So it also made me build a networking team. Um, I have a group of persons right now that we speak every single day. Um, I'd like to mention my mentor, Miss, Ma Mrs. Belze Martina, who she, she's always made herself available and she's still available now to me. And that happened because I met her at Carib DE. Um, during this panel discussion today, I mentioned to the group that I will be going up. And they said to me, if you need any assistance, um, it's some, if you want to elaborate on any points that we did, let us know. Some of them followed up with me this morning, asking me, what time is it, Iroh? Are you ready? Um, you also find that you, you, you get ideas from different persons and the experience from somebody in Trinidad compared to the experience of somebody in Bahamas, mm -hmm. it varies. So Carib D opened me up to that. And that was a great experience and you become part of a large family. And I really, really appreciated that. And I would encourage um, board directors across the Caribbean and St. Lucia, please send as many members as you can to Carib D because this would ensure that there is a succession planning for when the youth decide to join, that you have persons who are qualified and understand what it is to be part of the credit union movement. Great. Okay, so you've just given a very excited, <laughs> Erica, like a synopsis of what Carib DE was for you, what it mm -hmm. has done for you. Um, Mr. Lewis Peter, I would like you to now explain what is, how does, Carry DE, how does one access Carry DE? Because Ariel was talking about the board members send persons, but is it only for board members who can go? And when you've done a Carry DE course, um, can you take on the world and tell them everything <laughs> about, <laughs> you know, the, the, the credit unions? Um, you know, the funny thing is, I really did Carry DE before me. Huh? <laughs> let, us, let, us, let us get that. Let us get that in order. And, um, and that was by design. Um, I think Carib D represents a transformational process that um, somebody coming into the credit union movement um, for the first time um, gets an opportunity to be immersed in terms of what it is the credit union is all about. And I say so because I really spoke about it being a lot about the credit union movement, which it is, but it focuses a lot on the individual, in terms of your personal development. What are you going to contribute to this organization? Um, that you have certain talents within you that you can lend to this effort which is going to grow this organization. Um, the, the participants are put through many exercises which would focus on team building. Definitely. It would focus on, on you paying attention to the world. So in that short space of time, you focus on, on, let's see, the sustainable development goals of which we learned that came into force in 2015. And then that came out of the Millennium Development Goals, which was both in the UN General Assembly in 2003. So, so you understand that, that this credit union movement, though it is about dollars and cents, it's about people. And we like to use the phrase people helping people, which is central to what the credit union movement is. But beyond that, we're dealing with social change. We're talking about accessibility to education, um, elimination of poverty and, and, and hunger. We're talking about appreciation for the environment and sustainable processes to ensure we as humanity continue. So all of these are put into sharp focus while developing an individual and discovering certain talents and strengths you have to now come back to your credit union to push an agenda which is going to benefit the general membership. So that pretty much is, is what it is. Great. Well, at this time, we need to go to a break. However, we invite you to keep tuned to us because when we come back, we will be going deeper into the credit union now as an organization to tell you how you can join, what we plan, what our programs are, and what our activities are 
for this month of Credit Union Month. So please stay with us. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back, and thank you for staying with us. We are members, representatives of St. Lucia Workers Credit Union. And we are here um, on the occasion of the um, Credit Union Month for October 2019. And of course, our, my panelists, Mr. Lewis, Peter Lewis and Ariel Branford. So we're back, gentlemen. <laughs> and um, just before the break, we were talking about, you know, what the Carib DE did. And so I think you gave our viewers a very good understanding of the Credit Union movement. So we come back to our little piece of the Credit Union pie. And um, we moved into what you say, price, prime real estate. Yeah, prime real estate. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, records will show that since we moved from Grass Street mm. to that, you know, location, and they call us the Big Blue Building on the square, <laughs> um, that persons have now reactivated their accounts. People who did not want to come to the Grass Street branch just would not use the account and they have come in and every month we have persons opening new accounts or some months a hmm. hundred persons new accounts so that is interesting so i just want to tell tell the viewers what you think would you know your views and and i really please i'm addressing peter yeah, at the yeah, moment yeah, but, but both of you have yeah, to weigh in on this yeah. but one of the things is she's right well the AGM, I'd like to use the AGM as an example. We actually hosted our AGM at our building this year, and <laughs> I believe in 10 minutes or less, we, got we, had, a, yeah, we had about 100, close to 100 girl, people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I mean, we've had AGMs at hotels <laughs> with <laughs> lovely refreshments, and we were struggling to get the numbers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, the, the new building, and you're right, when you look at the membership, and even people actually meet you now and they, they question you because they that that's the building in town right like you said the blue building mm. and i'll be like yeah um they'll be like okay so that's workers and you'll be like yeah so the building has has changed um the view of the credit union like you said um prime real estate peter <laughs> loves to say that um so w I, I i agree with you in in the fact that stuff has changed and there were some accounts that were actually dormant and they're now yeah, they're, they're active i believe the location and the fact that it's accessible to them ah. is really what changed Thanks. most of it now remember we did speak about the the um, sustainable development goals <coughs> and one of the sustainable development goals is access to financial resources. So in a way, in orchestrating such a move, Workers' Credit Union sought to be true to that particular goal of access to finance. And more than that, recognizing the fact that it is the city and the central spot for activity on a Saturday, we moved our operations, which would be on a Saturday at Gable Woods Mall, to that particular branch. And I think Increasing that level of access created some level of excitement. But, I mean, while we can talk about Workers' Credit Union, and we're here to speak about that, um, I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that it is Credit Union Month. And we have credit unions across the length and breadth of St. Lucia. And we are seeing that more people are turning to credit unions. You have in Labrie, you have the Labrie Credit Union. In Monrepo, you have the Monrepo Credit Union. You have Shuazel Credit Union. You have teachers, of course. You have um, civil service credit union. 
and um, you also have the hospitality farmers. Elks. You have farmers and workers general credit union. Mm -hmm. And so what you're seeing is that because of the, the, the level of focus and development, the push of credit unions, um, the brand is, is generating a greater degree of trust. And so all credit unions are seeing some degree of, of growth. I, I think now the, what, we, what we have done at Workers is that we, has, we have tried very much to be relevant regardless of the time. And to do that, you have to correspond with your membership. And, and even now, I will speak later probably about some initiatives we hope to pursue, not only just to deal with the youth, but to deal with all sections of our, of our membership. Okay, so now that we're talking about Credit Union Month um, and we're talking about the building and everything, we want to invite the viewers, St. Lucia as a whole, to come out. We have our open day on mm -hmm. the 17th of October yes. um, from 8, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You are welcome to come. We will be there to welcome you, to show you around, to, to tell you about the, the St. Lucia Workers Credit Union. We also have a family fun day on the 12th of, of October, which is Saturday, on the Derek Walcott Square. There will be a bouncy castle. So uh, again, you come out and you, you, you participate. Um, Mr. Branford, Ariel, is, you were talking about other things that we have in the pipeline, mm -hmm. exciting stuff that we want to bring forth for our members right. and so to attract new members. Correct, so I'm gonna stick with the youth again. Um, when I joined, I noticed there's a room, there's a room for opportunity in regards to online banking. Um, and I was told that we're already pursuing different projects in regards to the ATM. And being one of the younger directors on the board, um, I was one of them pushing for it, letting the directors know that, yes, we, we understand the in the credit union movement, we're all about saving and financial planning and so forth. And some of the more senior directors were against it simply because there was a scare in regards to people having full access to the money and taking everything that they have. But I also reminded them that with the way that things are moving and how people get paid, it's sort of a deterrent for a young person to say, I'm going to get paid for the credit union, but I have to go and take a line. So I, I used that idea to let them know People get paid on Friday, and now we're going to ask them to come to the credit union on Saturday just to access their funds. Sometimes they don't even want all of the funds. They just want to make sure that they got paid. So trying to get the um, online banking available would attract loads more, and the youth would probably, they, they would definitely see this as something beneficial to them. And also the ATM project and having an ATM Visa card, that is where we need to go. They do the online shopping and everything. So sometimes the um, traffic that we have on a Saturday, and I also use that as an example, telling them it could be reduced if these people have access to their funds. And like I stated, just to see, and sometimes if they just want to purchase something at the supermarket or if they want to make a, do an online transaction, they could do that. So that is one thing um, I'm trying to help them with. And with my background of basically database and so forth, I'm trying to assist them in creating such a database and stuff like that. Exciting stuff. <laughs> but we have to also remember, we have to encourage them to save. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. So we have to plug that in as well. <laughs> yeah. So you see why we have Mr. Bradford <laughs> on the board. So we yes. have balance. Yes. And, uh, yes, very true. Um, and I just want to, Mr. Lewis, I, I go between Peter and but yeah. if there's anything else that you would like to say to the listening public to s that that you know we ha we have not already said. Um, well, one of the things is that Mr. Branford was was being very generous because you know he, <laughs> he does he does push <laughs> he does push the board to pursue more more creative options and um, and not only that but but through our participation in, in other regional. Um, regional conventions and approaches. Um, we're looking at um, probably a mobile app. Of course, we're looking at the online banking and facilitating a more tech-savvy operation. Um, we can understand, of course, like we know through history, that um, 
you know, we, we have to manage our resources a particular way. And what we've discovered is that the time couldn't be more ripe than now to do so because the cost of actually implementing certain technological approaches is actually much better than it was three years ago, five years ago. So um, we are currently pursuing and speaking to, to many agencies <coughs> that are going to provide services of that kind to our membership. And we look forward to being able to, to deliver that to them because like I explained, the function of the credit union is really, and the board of directors, is to respond to the needs of the membership. It is really about the membership determining what it is they want. And that is something that the membership have tabled. One of the things I would like to tell people is that, that um, they should be very well aware of the opportunities that credit unions provide them. I, I say that being a member of a credit union, you've given yourself another financial avenue in terms of, um, I mean, we have, this, we have this standard banking system. And if you don't necessarily happen to get treated the way you want, and you're a member of a credit union, remember, you are part owner. And so, and so the, the benefits redound to, to your personal benefits. So you, you shop at your own supermarket, the profits share among the membership. So um, I would encourage them to, to, to use the credit union because I personally have benefited. I mean, at the time when I did my studies, I took my loan from my credit union. And, and so it is with great pleasure that I can give back in this capacity. I would like, you, you mentioned our stalwarts, and I would like to, to thank them for their vision, but also to, that they place trust in us. Because I was <laughs> like Mr. Brantford <laughs> in 2006. No, I, was, I, was, I was the young director. And um, so now um, succeeding to, to, to lead the board, it, it, I am humbled because I was prepared for this. Um, it was so nice that last week, Monday, we were able to have an activity for our stalwarts and those who, and we had a, a, a beautiful um, um, buffet lunch and some of them got a chance to, to meet up with each other. But our thing had a special touch, I mean, Imagine you walk in there and you get your, you get your foot massage. Wow. Yes. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's all in an effort to, to, to show our appreciation. We're not only focused on the youth, we're not only focused on the working public, but we, we're showing our love to our retirees and those who have set the way. Great. So as we coming to that point where we want to wrap up, mm -hmm. um, Ariel, I just <laughs> want you to, again, speak to the youth. Mm -hmm. Let them know what is different about us mm -hmm. and to appeal to them because we want to invite them into St. Lucia Workers Credit Union. And we are going in that direction. So mm -hmm. we would like you to, you know. Okay, well, what I would say to the youth is that there's loads of lucrative options out there. Um, but you need to actually take some time to do your own personal financial assessment and also get financially educated and I think that's the difference with the credit union these lucrative options out there m will not give you the fine print however they will give you what you want to hear um, the credit union you will go to the credit union and they will guide you an example of that is the credit union will let you know what you're asking for currently you cannot get it and with us youth that hurts and that's when they look for other options and they jump onto whichever option is available however the credit union also gives you an option and tell you we could get there together so we can give you this now we could give you that and then when you finish with this because one of the things the credit union does is and i like to hear them say that they want you to be in a better position than you started Oh, so yes. it's like is he like Peter said it's members for members. So they would they would assist you in getting to the point that you want to financially. But all of this makes no sense if you're not financially educated, because when they tell you at the end of your loan you would gain this or that, it may not matter to you if you don't understand what they're saying. So I would like the youth to take some time to assess themselves, um, assess a need against a want, and. Do some financial education so you, when you make your decisions, you're making sound decisions in regards to what you're doing financially. Great. Mm -hmm. And even as you talk about <coughs> what the youth can do, um, then we give serious thought 
and consideration to our corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. So while we're talking about loans and, and our bottom line and all of those things, uh -huh. we do give back to society. And even part of this, uh, this activities this month, mm -hmm. we have an, a poverty eradication exercise where we would be feeding the homeless. And so even the youth, I know like you were saying earlier on, they may not want to participate in certain things because there is no financial reward. But I, I believe that one of the fundamental things missing in our youth is that they have to understand not everything is about money. Correct. You understand? And so poverty is a frame of mind and not a, a state of being. So if we could invite them to come in, even on those days, to volunteer their time to help us feed those people, see life from another standpoint, mm -hmm. see what those people experience, and see how gratifying it is to actually hand this person a plate of food or to put them to sit down or to bring them a glass of water. Mm -hmm. Or just listen to their story. Or to just listen to yeah. their story. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's good that you touched on that because um, we also have a family fun day, which we have scheduled for Saturday this weekend. And um, it's about bringing the kids out, Mouncy Castle, a bit of treasure hunt and so forth. And, uh, you know, Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Irene, <laughs> always central to that. And the kids have a glorious time. But beyond just that, in terms of fulfilling our corporate social responsibility, we are proud at Workers' Credit Union to have been able to, to give scholarships to the children of our members. And some of them have gone on to do to fantastic. I mean, some of them, we have one who is soon going to be, a, who's graduating as a surgeon. We have one who's doing very excellent work in her field. And um, so, so members benefit from that as well. We also had the pleasure of hosting annually a, a kids camp which is two days of, of, of fun. The kids tell you at the end of the camp, <laughs> ah, we're not coming back. And, and it's all about our members. I mean, they, they did, I remember coming there one day and the kids went around the square doing their march in their various groups and, you know, and, and, and it is very gratifying to know that you are part of a process helping to build your country because, let's face it, if we as a nation don't have access to certain things, if we do not improve the well-being of persons, if we don't care for those who are homeless and don't have, if we don't care for the elderly and those who have, who have laid the way before, then, then, then where are we going? And, and we must understand that, and the credit union puts into, into, into square focus that, that we must give to get. And that is why we pool our resources together for the benefit of the membership. And um, we at Workers' Credit Union, you know, we've been blessed that we've had directors who have cared enough to pass the battle to somebody like me who will pass the battle to IREAL and, and maybe your daughter might come on and maybe my son may come on or other young people will come on. But the whole aim is to continue to develop this organization so that as it develops, so will uh, the nation develop. And, um, and we can't ask for any better reward than to see these improvements in all these areas. Great. Well, um, you know, every time you're having fun, you have to take a little break so that we can re-energize and come back. So we go to break now. We will be back shortly. The gift of life is in you. The gift of life is in me A red and rich supply for life That flows and helps us to survive Without it I am dying You share it, I am living Without it I am dying You share it, I am living On you I am dependent, don't let me down A pint from you I'm needing to Turn my life around So come along, donate, donate, don't wait My heart is beating
Welcome back, viewers. And we are here now. We want to just give you some information about the exciting products that are offered at St. Lucia Workers Credit Union. Um, we in the month, this month is a lot of things. <laughs> it is Kuyol month. <laughs> it is um, Credit Union month. Last month and it is also season. Cancer Awareness month. Mm. And in the <coughs> spirit of keeping up with, because the cancer is, we don't, we don't hide that anymore because it is a reality. And St. Lucia Workers Credit Union has recognized that one of the challenges with cancer is that persons are afraid to test. Either they're afraid to test or they can't afford to test. So we have what we call a pink loan, mm -hmm. where the funds for your initial testing is available. You come in and you apply and we work with you to get that loan so you can actually go and test. So you heard it here first. So please come on our open day, which is the 17th of October, and we will tell you more. And we can take your application and you can, you know, go through and do those tests that you're afraid to go and get done. I pass on to Peter and Ariel now to tell you about other mm -hmm. exciting products available at St. Michelle Booker's Credit Union. Well, uh, well Michelle, you kind of hit something on, the, on, on you really spot on there. Um, like I said, we, we being socially responsible, we also have loans where we have... We have our Christmas loan special, which will be launching very soon. And right now, we also have the hurricane special, where persons can come in and, and borrow monies to help to, to ensure that their homes are, are, are strong and fortified for the hurricane season. We, we just launched, actually, a few days ago, a snap loan where you can come in and you know without any deposit and so forth and you can qualify for a snap loan now but remember we are a member driven organization so you have to seek membership and um we and and we will continue <coughs> to develop products that will work to the benefit of the membership um we are guided by the the theme for this year which is for credit union month which is local local service global impact and it, and it speaks to if we develop the country then say lucia and other credit unions will have the kind of impact across the globe that would improve our very life we don't only have loans um there's also stuff like the indemnity plan indeed and that that is one of these things that i like to pitch to persons because death is inevitable indeed um most instances it's unplanned and it, the fact that you could actually put aside some money that when something like that happens and I actually lost somebody recently, you don't notice how expensive these things are until that time. So stuff like the indemnity plan, <coughs> and I'm not going to elaborate on it because we actually want you to come in. There's about, I think we've added two or three new plans onto sure, that, yes. yeah. which is basically increasing the amount that's available to you. Um, we have after school study program. Uh -huh. um, these, these things are uh, us trying to give back. So there's, there's other products, not just loans available to you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have a lot of stuff. And like Peter said, and this is for everybody out there, it's members only. So it's always good for you to walk in. And I could tell you for a fact, you walk in and you'd be surprised the assistance you get mm -hmm. just to become a member. member. Indeed. Indeed. Well, yeah. gentlemen, we have come to the end of a beautiful <laughs> session. Yes, indeed. And so I invite you to make your closing comments <coughs> to our viewers. Well, um, well, first of all, I want to, I want to thank you. I uh, want to thank you for the beautiful job you have done moderating this panel discussion mm -hmm. and also Mr. Branford. And um, what I would like to leave with our viewers is um, <coughs> I would like to encourage them to become a member of St. Lucia Workers Credit Union. Um, we also have products for young people. You could open a, an account for your granddaughter, your grandson, your niece, your nephew, and so forth, and our Young Dreamers account. And set your, your loved ones in motion to be part of an organization that will encourage their personal development, which would lead to the development of the organization. An organization which cares about <coughs> St. Lucia, which cares about our financial <coughs> well-being, and to be part of an environment that they can develop themselves and the country as a whole. And we at St. Lucia Workers Credit Union, we want our members to know that we love them. We want them to know that we'll continue striving for excellence and we will continue to push the theme, local service, global impact. 
Um, mm -hmm. There's not much to add on to what Peter said. However, I'd like to remind them and ask people to do a little research in regards to credit unions and compare them to the banks. And just remember that we don't operate like banks and we consider you a member and not a Probably. customer. And if you, if you do your research and you look at the history, this, the last global recession that we had, it wasn't the first one and it's not going to be the last one. <laughs> However, no credit union went under. So I encourage people to join the credit unions. Um, there's several. Well, obviously, I'd prefer if you would join the St. Lucia Workers Credit Union. <laughs> However, just being part of the credit union movement, movement is development for the country on a whole. That's it for me. Thank you, mm -hmm. Peter and Ariel. And as we close, I take this opportunity to extend a special thank you to the management and staff of St. Lucia Workers Credit Union for their very uh, uh, their tireless job for putting this organization to where it is right now. It would not be possible if without their hard work, and we do not want to close this program if we without don't say thank thanks. you. We also want to thank our members, because like you have heard throughout the program, this is a member-based organization, and without members putting their strength behind us, then we, can't, we can talk, but nothing will happen. True. But as you have seen, a lot has happened, and that is because our members believe in us and have pushed us, and we want to say thank you. We want you to actually come out to the, the activities we've planned for this month. Again, it is the Youth Forum on the 14th of October. Friendly then we Friday. have the on Monday, Saturday. then we have the fun day on Saturday, uh, Saturday the, the 12th, and then the open day on the 17th. So thank you very much for viewing. Have a pleasant balance of October, because there's so much happening in October. <laughs>